Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at the Python implementation of binary trees. Or at least we look at a Python implementation of binary trees. There are so many different ways you can do this. Python actually has a library that already implements binary trees as well in the standard library, but nonetheless let's um, look at how we'd implement it from scratch. And it's very much like how you implement linked lists. So um, we'll remind ourselves that a tree is made up of nodes. A left, it has three parts, the value and the left node and the right node. So if we're declaring that in Python, oh yeah, we, we know that there's a root, a parent, a child and a leaf, and that's just terminology that I will use occasionally. If we want to create a tree, all right, I said it about linked lists and I'll say it again about this. Um, some of the code we use is more about object orientation than procedural programming. So what, I, what I'd like you to do is take my word for it in terms of this code, that the way to declare a node is to say class node, define i and i t, self and value, self left is none, self right is right and none, and, and then self dot value is val, whatever value has been passed in. And to declare a tree, we just declare an instance of uh, a node and that's it and we, we set the tree to have no value. Don't worry about that too much for the moment. Um, you'll see it a lot more next year when you do object-oriented programming exactly what that stuff means but you can see in general it has similar structure to the pseudocode left, right and value. So if we want to delete a tree it's quite straightforward. All we do is we just say self.root is assigned none. As we know in Python the word for null is none, N-O-N-E, big N. Begin small o and e, and to delete a tree, we just set the root to be to be none. If we want to check if the tree is empty, it's quite straightforward. We just return if the root self dot root is equal to none. If it's equal to none, then the tree is empty. If it's not equal to none, then the tree is not empty. Let's look at how we display a tree, and the approach we're going to take here is the recursive approach because it's slightly simpler. So we won't be using a stack. And the iterative solution will just call the program to display a tree itself twice. So here's the whole, all the code. I've created two methods here or modules. One is called print tree and the other is called underscore print tree. They're divided by the hash in the middle. So this is a common enough naming um, protocol in, in, in programming. When you call, when you have a program and then you want to call a version of it. Sometimes what people do is call the program module name as the same name, just with an underscore in front of it. Print tree itself, that program on the top half, all it does is just calls the program underscore print tree, but passes in the root value. So the underscore print tree version on the bottom half is the one that is actually doing all the work. And what's it doing? It's taking in the root and, and it's taking in the root value and then it's saying if the root is not null then just print out the, tr the left nodes and when we finish printing out the left nodes print out the values of all the left nodes and then print out the right nodes and then print out all those values and then we're done. So it's a very straightforward print. It's a very simple way of displaying a tree. If we want to find a particular value that has a particular node in it or a particular node that has a particular value. This is over two pages. Our, our find program simply passes in the value we're looking for and the root, and it passes into a program called underscore find. Again, this is a, a convention in, in calling recursive programs. And the underscore find program, what does it do? It checks if the current, what's been currently pointed at is the value we're looking for. If it is, great, we've finished. Otherwise, it checks if the value we're looking for is less than the current value. And if it's less than, we go left. Else, if the value is greater than it, we go right. So we've only three options. The value is equal to the one we're looking for, the value is less than or greater than. If the value is less than, the value we're looking for is less than the current value, we go left. If the value is greater than, we go right. And we call underscore find again, either left or right. How about inserting a node? How do we do that? How do we insert a node? Our program will be called add, and all we do in the main add program is to call self.underscore add the value in. If the what we say here is if the tree is empty, 
we just add the add the per add the node in as the root now. Else we just call underscore add. What does underscore add do? do? It checks where we need to add in this value. And do we need to add it into the left or right? Well, if the value we're adding in is less, we go left. Uh, or if it's bigger, we go right. And we keep going until we encounter a null space. And then whatever that null space is in, we add in the node there. So that is binary trees. Over to you now. Thanks very much. <laughs>